Hello there. I've been reacquainting myself with some of my uh, or original artwork that I was putting up on YouTube a year or more ago. And one of the techniques I really love and haven't done for quite a while is chain pulls. With my various lengths of chain, I've got this one here. I have what I call my mid-size, which is 20 to 30 centimetres. My small size, which is 8 to 12 or th even 13 centimetres. And then my long ones, which are uh, upwards of 40 centimetres, so that I can uh, use the different chains for whatever I'm going to be doing. And today I have decided to do a, a flip cup pour first and tilt. And I've just put various colours in here, including phthalo green and phthalo blue and crimson. Uh, all the mid to darker range colours. Um, it's a pointless me telling you what they are because when you do your own artwork, if you want to do something similar, just choose the colours you like and go from there making sure that the paint is quite runny because when you're doing chain pulls you don't need paint that's too thick and for my um, paint for my chains I am, am using my extreme sheen paints again so I have got the extreme sheen 24 karat gold the extreme sheen pearl um, and I will be running the train chains through the colours, a little bit of separate gold, a little bit of separate pearl, and a mix. And I will be pulling those over the top of my um, flip cut pour uh, to see what sort of patterns that I can make. And of course I have got my two pots of water, cold water, for putting my chains in as I work. So I'll start now by just doing the flip cut pour and tilt. As you saw, I took off quite a lot of paint, really probably as much paint as I felt comfortable taking off because otherwise it all gathers around the chain that you're pulling and you end up with this excess paint that you either have to use a pipette for to suck it up or you have to find some other way of removing your paint from your surface. 
So now I'm going to get my chains, and this is where it gets quite grubby, but mm, <laughs> that's part of doing paint pouring. I'm going to start with a large chain, and I'm going to run it through my paint here, and I'm going to um, lift it and put it onto my painting, uh, just sort of in, rand in a random pattern to see what I can get from it. And I have a little plastic flat knife here. I'm just going to run this down. I prefer to do it this way rather than dribbling the paint over it because um, I feel better, more in control this way of what I can do with the chain. Uh, yes, it's mixing it all in and making it quite globby, but that's part of the fun also of um, seeing what sort of a pattern I can make from this. The other thing, of course, I'm experimenting with is because it's extreme sheen paint and it's... Um, the, it's well known, particularly the gold, for creating some really great cell action. I'm interested to see what sort of uh, result I'll get in the way of cells from running this chain through the paint. My base paint hasn't got any um, dimethicone or silicone in it, although it has created a few little patterns. I think that's probably from the phthalo green. I tend to get a film on that when it's been sitting for a while, so I mix it in and I think that might have something to do with it. So I need to lift up my chain and be able to put it down, hopefully, without too much mess and make a pattern across my board. Hanging a wee piece over the edge there. <coughs> Excuse me. So that I can pull it comfortably. Just put that, pop that down and just leave it for a moment to settle. Okay. I've given it about a minute. Now I'm going to start the pull. And keeping my fingers pretty much down even with my surface, I'm just going to slowly start to pull this around. I want to try and keep the pattern as much as possible. As you can see there, it's curving out rather than following the slight inwards pull that I had. But again, I'm not too worried about that. I'm getting some great colours coming through. But I'm just slowing down here now because as you can see, even though I got rid of quite a lot of the paint, it is starting to build up. And that means I have to go extremely slowly. If you've watched me do doing chain pulls in previous videos, um, you'll notice that it's probably a normal speed. But of course, what I've done is to save time, is when I've edited my video, I have uh, uh, sped it up so that you're not standing there or sitting there watching me and quietly going off to sleep from all the time it takes. So this is actually looking really good now. I'm happy with that. I'm loving the way the colours are coming through. The chain, by the way, is 3mm ball chain available at most hardware stores. In New Zealand, it seems to be the standard chain of preference for putting onto um, bath plugs and similar, although that you don't see that much in New Zealand anymore. Most modern baths don't have um, plugs with chains on them, but that is still the one of choice. Okay, my fingers are just disgusting. I'll just wipe them off. And there's the pattern for you. And of course now I want to fill in the pattern, um, the parts that are still quite blue. So I'll be using a smaller piece of chain now and putting it onto the board. I'll put it in the paint first. So I'll use a, yes, just a st standard, what it would be, probably close to 30 centimetres. And I'm going to just run it back through the paint again as I did before, 
and rather than using my little knife I'll just dot it with my finger. That's why I've got the two separate colours there because if I want to use them they're not all going to be sort of blobbing into each other as these ones are. But as you've noticed on there the gold and the um, pearl have sort of uh, are quite distinctive which is great. So I'm going to now run this one around here follow the curve up to there and bring it down so that I'm filling in that blank space area. Again trying to keep the chain as close as possible to level with my board and slowly pulling it on one side only until I get it right down. The beauty of doing it from, from the inside to the outside edge of course is taking off any excess paint that would otherwise glob up around the chain and down and there I have my um, follow-up piece just to, to you know give the excess color I thought about doing it in there as well but I'm not going to I'm going to uh, move on to another part of the board now to do um, some more chain work Actually, standing looking at it, I would rather like to do an edge across there because I'm not happy with that edge. So if I just do a small round piece into there, it will take away the strange looking edge there. I'm not happy with that one either, but that is from me not curving the chain correctly as I turned it round. You've got to be watching all sides of your chain as you go. And as you can see, I've lost a lot of the pattern in that edge. So I'll get a small piece of chain now and put it into, I want a bit more gold this time. So I'll put it in here into the um, blobby mix and hope that I actually get a little bit of more of the gold coming through rather than just putting it straight into the gold paint. So that's done. Okay, and I'm going to put it down here now like that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start pulling before I get to the edge. And then when I get down near the edge, I'll, I'm still holding on to both ends. I will start to pull it from that side. And that gives you the uh, more of a feathered edge on both sides rather than just on one. I've got a drip on there. So I'm just going to take it off. With a small piece of chain like that. I'll have a look at that again after and see what I think and if I'm not happy with that then I will just re-chain over it again to uh, give a bit more um, definition to it. Right so now I'm going to move around the board doing what the pattern I have been I have just shown you until I'm happy with the coverage and uh, then I will um, come back to you again but right now I'm just going to play some music while I do my chain patterns.
right, well, I'm happy with the way this looks. I'm not going to stop here because I want to try doing some curly whirlies. But um, I'm just going to get out some of these bubbles and then try doing a curly whirly or two to see what I get. And that's just by using the smallest chain and sort of wiggling it around in the paint because I love to experiment. It could be a complete disaster, but I want to try it to see how it works out. I want to do it in this area where there's sort of the little almost cell type action going on there. Possibly one up here and another one here. So I'm going to put a small chain into the paint and sort of mix it up. I want some gold and I want some white or pearl, I should say. And then do a curly whirly or two onto the uh, board, my sign board surface. Uh, and yep, yeah, <laughs> just see, I don't know how well it'll work as I'm saying because I can't, I have to work it from the inside out to take off the excess paint. Uh, it, I could have a lot of fun with it. So I think probably what I'll do before I start to put the chain on is just turn it round so I've got my work surface facing me rather than um, having it at the opposite side which makes it a little more awkward for me to manoeuvre. So I will now get my piece of chain out and try doing a curly whirly which is like a flower of course. It's another way of doing a flower but instead of doing um, the, fla the flower, actual flower pattern, you just sort of create these curly whirlies in the paint and then bring that down and I'm just going to pop it down here again to bring it round a little so that it's edged. Oh that's not so bad. Huh. Oh well that was fun doing. Very interesting and I'm going to do another one over here. Just kind of <laughs> they're weird. Yep they're interesting little curly whirlies I call them. <laughs> so I'll just get another piece of chain coated. I bought my chain at a local hardware store in a five meter length and then just cut the lengths that I wanted <laughs> and found that by the time I had done my long lengths there wasn't so much of the chain left, so I ended up going and getting another five metre piece of chain. And in New Zealand, of course, it's a little bit on the expensive side. I managed to get it on a really good special at the hardware store for five dollars a metre. But that still ends up being fifty dollars in total for the uh, chain that I bought. And I know in the Northern Hemisphere, in, in a lot of places, it's a lot cheaper than that. So here we go, I'll try another curly whirly. This one different again from what I just did before. And bring it round like that. And then put this little piece down again and curl it around like that. Okay, again, interesting. Not quite as curly whirly ish, but still. You know, it's just incredible what you can actually do with your pieces of chain. I'm going to get another tiny piece and I'm just going to pop it half and half in the white and in the gold to see what I can get. Unfortunately, my white has managed to encourage some blue into it from the edge of my board. But I will just lift this up and I'm going to just increase the curly whirly effect here because it's more not so much my curly whirly effect that I wanted. So I'm going to see what I can do with this. That's better. Yes, I like that very much. That's good. Okay, haven't got quite so much of just the phthalo green coming through. Right, so just give it another going over all the little bubbles that come up with the chain
that's just so pretty. I'm very, very happy with that. I'll turn it around the way I want it to be. Then I'll get my gloves on and I will bring it up to the camera for you to get a closer look at. I'm very happy with that. That's really pretty. That's how I like to do chain work. Before I bring the picture up to the light, I'm going to just move it out of the way slightly. I just want to show you that the paint that I have in the um, melamine tray there will not be wasted. I'm going to get the smallest of my uh, scrapers and a small ice cream pot. And I'm just going to scrape the paint from the tray into the um, pot to save it. Because it's extreme sheen paint and it's very, very expensive here in New Zealand, I don't want to waste any of it. And that's why I like this melamine tray so much, because it's smooth. Oh, I'm running over the edge there. It's smooth and easy to um, take the paint from so that I can save it for something else in, in the future rather than wasting it. And yes, I'll mix it up. It, it'll be a, a mix of Extreme Sheen Pearl and Extreme Sheen Gold. So there we go. I'll finish the rest of this off um, when, when I've finished my video. But that's what I'm doing. There's a small amount of blue in there, but once it's mixed up, that will make very little difference. Okay, so bring my painting back and bring it up to the light to give you a better look at it. It is so pretty and I'm really, really happy with the way that's come out because I wanted to do a simple chain pour that you could copy if you wished, uh, show you what I'm doing sl slowly and talk you through it. So I've got some cute little... <laughs> cells going on there, my curly whirly, my other more like a flower rather than curly whirly but still a similar idea. To me it's kind of like the end of a boa, small boa feather. Then we've got, I did down here, the triple colour mix. So you started out with the two together, then the single and the pearl, then the single in the gold, and um, that gives you the three colour way because as you can see for the rest of it I did the colours mixed in and I'm yes really really pleased with the way that's come out uh, there was no real cell action from the uh, extreme sheen paint but that is probably a bonus because I really don't like too many cells uh, going through my chain work I prefer to do chain work with a um, uh, paint that hasn't got any silicone or dimethicone or cell action going on. So that's it for me for today. Thank you very much for joining me and I'll see you next time.